Hi everyone, my name is Anu and in this video, I want to talk about how did I clear my system design interviews at Bloomberg, Atlassian, etc. So in this video, I'm going to share all of the important system design topics, concepts. I'm also going to share the study plan with you. And on top of it, I'm going to share the free resources that I use. So a little bit about me, I'm currently working as a software engineer at Google. And prior to that, I have cleared a lot of interviews. And to be honest, even fresher roles, some companies require system design even for fresher roles. So I prepared all of this in a short span of eight weeks. And there are some important concepts and topics that you should know as well. So in this video, I'm going to share what are the important topics, concepts, and I will also talk about the free resources that I have used. And if you like this video, I would also request you to please follow, like, share with your friends. And if you don't want to share with your friends, you can also share it with just your family. And it would mean a lot to me and motivate me to keep continuing making videos. So without further ado, now let's dive right in. So before starting with system design, I would recommend that you go ahead and learn about data structures, algorithms as well. They have some basic algorithms and these are actually the foundation of computer science. So if you directly go ahead and jump to system design interview topics or start learning system design, your knowledge won't be that thorough. So you should know a little bit about the basic data structures, the basic algorithms, and you should know what all of these do because this will help speed up your learning when you are actually going and learning about system design as well so just do a brief overview of what is graphs what are trees learn a bit about heaps cues and that will help you a lot so i would say that the first few moments you should keep for learning about computer architecture computer networks operating systems and data structures and algorithms so now once you're done with that you can go ahead to system design so talking about what are some important topics that you can learn for system design, I would say the first important topic is scalability. So scalability is all about how do you scale your system? How do you vertically scale your system? How do you horizontally scale your system? And that is a very important topic that you should know a lot about. So scalability is the first topic that you should know about. And I would say along with scalability, you should also know about availability, reliability. So these are some non-functional requirements of your system that you should know about. So without further ado, let's just move on to the next topic that you should be learning about. So along with scalability, you need to know the second important topic that you need to know about is availability. So how do you make sure that your web website or your whatever application you have is working 99.99% .99 of the time? So I know that sounds like a lot, but look at any other real life system around you. You will see that it's very rare that these websites are not able to serve traffic because in most of the cases you see that they are always available. It will never happen that you probably go to Facebook and you're not able to search something. And even if that happens, it's probably in the news. So availability is very important. You need to know about how are you going to make your system available. So availability is again important. And while we are at it, I would say that you should also know about CAP theorem. So CAP theorem is also a very important topic in system design and you should know about this as well. So when you're discussing the trade-offs of your system, you can keep CAP theorem as a baseline. And let's say your interviewer asks you to make it even more, make your system even more robust, then you can in some times say that, okay, CAP theorem has this limitation and these are the after these constraints, I cannot move forward because of the CAP theorem. So if you're aware of this, it will also show it to your interviewer that you have done your homework. You are very good at the theories and all of the important theorems which are in system design. So I would say learn about CAP theorem as well. The next thing that you should know about is back of the envelope calculation. So back of the envelope calculation is all about how do you express kilobytes, megabytes, gigabytes in terms of 10 to the powers or in terms of two powers. So you should be able to calculate quickly, right? So doing quick math is very important in system design. So I would say learn about back of the envelope calculations. This is very important when you are, let's say, calculating the QPS of your system or you're talking about throughput and you need to decide like what kind of database you need to take or what how many reads and writes are going to be happening 
for your particular application so it's very important that you know back of the envelope calculation so with that i come to my second point that you should know about back of the envelope calculation the third thing that you should know about is domain name system so domain name system is very important because how do you find your server so with that i come to my third topic which is going to be domain name system so let's say you have horizontally scaled your system but how do you know which server your application is supposed to talk to how do you look up the ip address of that system and if you know a bit about ip addresses you'll know that they are very complicated you have some uh, you have a few dots like 123.00. dot something and that's not very a human readable name as well so when i know that i need to search something on google i directly go to google.com i don't actually remember the ip address that i need to hit to so that is where domain name system comes so domain name system is all about mapping the ip address to a human or user readable name so you should know about how you're going to use dns in your system as well so that is the third most important topic that you should be learning about which is domain name system the fourth important topic that you should know about is load balancers so let's say that you have horizontally scaled your system so now for your application you have about four servers which are running but for each of these four servers let's say a user request comes how do you know which server you're going to hit so that is where your load balancer comes in load balancer makes sure that the load is equally distributed across each of your four servers so let's say that if any request comes each of those four servers are going to receive an equal amount of request and one of the servers is not going to go down because it's going to be load balance across everything and even if one server does go down your load balancer will know how to smartly distribute the request across the three of the remaining servers so you should know about load balancers and how you're going to use that in your system as well the fourth and i think we are at fifth now so the fifth most important topic that you should know about is databases so databases is very important because you should know about what are some different type of databases that you can use whether you want to use a relational database or you want to use a mysql database or a nosql database and what are some other database types so either you want to use redis and there are a lot of other database types as well so you should know about what are some different types you need to know about database partitioning as well in this you are also going to learn about how do you distribute the keys how do you actually shard your database so databases is a very very vast topic but it's also very important and in any system let's say you have like a 45 minute or one hour system design interview and this goes even for engineering manager roles that you will be asked about system design in that as well you will have to discuss a lot about databases so it's very important that you are well through with the different database type how do you do database partitioning how do you do database sharding so make sure that you are learning about databases a lot the next important topic that you should know about is key value store so key value store is very important for scalability for versioning and i would say that this is also very important topic that you should go through the next important topic is content delivery network so content delivery network is all about caching so again let's go back to our example of horizontally scaling a system so now that i have horizontally scaled my system i know that those four servers are going to be serving the user request but do i want them to know about the users every information right that is going to be a bit inefficient right instead i would want consistency across all of these data all of these servers so i want to make sure that every time that i'm querying some information which is related to the user i should get the same information it doesn't matter if i make a query to server 1 or server 2 i should get the same data every time and how am i going to make sure that happens so that is where cdn comes in so with cdn what happens is that you make your server stateless now again this is going to be a vast topic if i start talking about stateless and stateful but just to give you a brief overview stateful is when you are storing the data as well in your let's say server stateless is when you have separated your data and your server functionality right so that is stateless because it doesn't store the user's current state right so you want to make sure that your architecture is stateless and how do you make sure that happens that is where cdn comes in so cdn is content delivery network and it's all about caching strategies and how do you actually use a different let's say a data store to hold all of your users data 
so cdn is very important that you should know if you are preparing for a system design interview so this other important topic that you should know if you're preparing for system design is monitoring so how do you monitor client side errors how do you monitor server side errors how do you monitor what are some error rates error requests so this is very important even in real life software engineering you should know about what is the maximum limit of errors and how do you make sure that as soon as some error comes in if you are the system architect you should be the first one that is notified so this is all about monitoring so you should also know a bit about monitoring and the other important topic is distributed messaging queue so distributed messaging queue is all about even within a simple application you have tons of things that is going on you have a ton of messages which is going on in let's say some, something as simple as opening netflix right or let's say something as simple as spinning up google chrome so even these have a lot of details a lot of nuances so how do you make sure that all of these messages do not slow down the system in any way and that is when distributed messaging queue comes in and i would suggest that while you are at distributed messaging queue you can also start learning a bit about kafka as well but only do that if you have a lot of time but this if you learn able to learn about kafka messaging queues as well along with distributed messaging queues you'll be able to nail your system design interviews so the other important topics that you should know about is rate limiter so all of these big websites that you see like google netflix or let's say amazon they all have rate limiting enabled so what rate limiting does is that let's say there's some fraud user or a malicious user how do you make sure they don't mess up with your system and that is where rate limiting comes in so rate limiting makes sure that if there is a malicious user that is let's say is hitting like 10000 requests per second which is absolutely going to crash your server you want to make sure that you limit those instances that is where rate limiting comes in because rate limiting is going to take care of all of that for your server so those are some important topics that you can learn if you are preparing for a system design interview now let's move on to the most important topic which is what are the resources that you use so the very first resource that i would recommend personally is system design primer so system design primer is like your one stop go to destination where you can learn about everything which is related to system design so at system design primer you will be able to see what are some study plans that you can follow and there are a lot of resources and most of the resources are going to be so system design primer is the first resource that i would suggest the second resource that i would suggest is system design by alex zu i think i'm pronouncing the name right but even if i'm not that is a very good book that you should be following and it doesn't have a lot of theory about these concepts but then again system design primer is something that you can use if you want to learn a lot more in detail about the theory let me know in the comments if you would like me to make a playlist on system design i will be happy to share that as well but i just want to gauge interest of how many people will actually be interested so let me know in the comments if you want that as well comment system design and i will make sure that i upload the playlist for system design and i'm going to upload it in a way that is very relatable for you because i have started learning system design as a noob as a dummy so i'm going to be sharing with you everything in a very basic simple way so just write it in the comment if you would like me to start a series on that as well so coming back to the topic the second thing that you can do is have a look at system design book by alex zu and the third very gold mine of a resource that i would suggest is going through david milan harvard lectures this is pure gold so these videos are actually like at the time of making this video for me it's at least like 12 13 years old video and they're still very relevant in most of the case right so his talk on scalability is something that if you're able to go through that 1 hour 45 minutes of interview of uh, youtube video then you will be able to solve anything that is related to scalability you will be able to answer anything which is related to scalability because that's how good that lecture is so go through that go through david milan's uh, lectures on scalability as well the fourth thing that i would suggest is there is again a book which is design data intensive application i don't remember the or name of the author but it's a very good book and i would suggest that i personally learned a lot from that book as well and i haven't completed it totally because it's very like i said data intensive it's actually very intensive but it's very good 
you should read about that and i would say that do that only if you have a lot of time if you don't have a lot of time you you are short on your timeline that you have for prepare for interviews you can probably leave out this so these were the four resources that you can follow they don't cost anything they don't cost they're completely free right and i have learned from them and i think you can learn too so i hope that gives you a lot of insights about the free resources that you can use to learn about system design so now till now we have talked about the concepts we have talked about what are the resources you can use to learn about system design now let's talk about the study plan so the study plan is that i'm going to prepare a eight week plan for you to learn about system design so the first two weeks is going to be all about brushing up the basics now brushing up the basics means that you should go ahead and read a bit about data structures algorithms you should know about operating systems you should also know a bit about computer architecture and in general you should know about how do request actually work so life of a request is something that what happens as soon as you type something on your computer how does it go through the web server web through the client side how does it go to the server and how does the request actually come back to you so this is a complete uh, life cycle of a request and that is something that you should know about so i would say these two weeks spend some time on revising your computer science basics now once those two weeks are done now you have about six weeks of time how do you distribute that six weeks of time so in that six weeks what you can do is that you can leave first three weeks to learn only about the system design theory concepts that i mentioned earlier so this time just focus on reading blogs and reading uh, looking up youtube videos or going through certain books that i've already mentioned so these three weeks should be reserved for just learning and once you are done with learning a lot about this don't worry memorizing everything that is not something that you should be doing you will be able to learn all of it thoroughly when you actually start practicing solving system design interview questions so with that we come to the next part which is how do you spend the last remaining three weeks so in the last remaining three weeks you should spend two weeks for solving system design interview questions and how you're going to find those is that you can find it anywhere on many of the important sites like you can find it on system design primer as well on github and there are some other sites as well or even on lead core you can start solving system design interview questions and there are other some free sites as well where you can learn system design practice system design so i would say that start doing that start drawing up all of the architecture with diagrams start drawing how you're going to how a request is going to come how load balancer is going to handle where that request goes to so start doing all of that practically solving each question and if you get stuck at something if you're not able to solve go ahead and revise that topic as well so these two weeks should be reserved only for solving system design interview questions and the last one week you are going to leave that for giving mock interviews and you're also going to leave that for just practicing with anyone that you're able to find so maybe you have a friend with whom you want to solve these questions so you can find them pick them and add, add, do a uh, interview with them so in this way it's going to really help you in preparing how you actually going to talk in an interview so you'll start with first the back of the envelope calculations first you're just going to draw a simple server simple system which just takes the request and returns a response and then you're solely going to keep optimizing it and making it even more complex so this is some way that you should know about how you're actually going to answer these questions in a real life interview so make sure that you have that last one week only for practicing and with that that is how you can divide your own eight weeks of preparation for system design interview. So that's it for the video. Hope you liked it. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and share it with any friends or family that you would like. And let me know in the comments if these resources were helpful. And until then, I will see you in the next one. Bye.